Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on types of arterial pulses. The arterial pulse waveform can be difficult to classify and is an often neglected clinical sign. The differences between pulse patterns may be subtle and therefore difficult, or impossible, for the expert as well as the novice to detect clinically without intra-arterial monitoring. They are discussed as a group for ease of comparison, and the important clinical pulse forms are highlighted. First type of arterial pulse is the anacrotic pulse. It is a slow rising pulse that gives the impression of an interruption of the upstroke of the pulse, on the ascending limb of the waveform. The peak of the limb is also closer to the second heart sound. Picture A shows a normal arterial pulse, whereas picture B shows an anacrotic pulse. This pulse is often associated with aortic stenosis. The anacrotic pulse of aortic stenosis can be attributed to prolonged ventricular ejection and the venturi effect in the aorta. The stenosis, or narrowing of the aortic valve, means it takes longer to eject blood out of the left ventricle. This longer ejection time delays the upstroke of the pulse, so the peak occurs closer to the second heart sound. Valvular narrowing creates a venturi effect that further reduces the diameter of the arterial lumen, thus giving the feeling of an interrupted upstroke on palpation. For its sign value, if present, an anacrotic pulse is specific for severe aortic stenosis. Being able to elicit this sign can be useful in both observed clinical exam settings, and in evaluating the emergent patient who presents with shortness of breath and an aortic stenotic murmur. The second type of arterial pulse is the bigeminal pulse. This is a double or twinned pulse. Bi means two, and geminus means twins. Two beats of a peripheral pulse occur in rapid succession, followed by a long pause, then another two beats in rapid succession. It is an irregular pulse. Bigeminal pulse is shown in this picture. This type of pulse is associated with severe heart failure, hypovolemic shock, cardiac tamponade, and sepsis. For its mechanism, the bigeminal pulse is created by a normal sinus beat, followed by a premature contraction. The premature beat has less stroke volume, therefore, the strength of the pulse varies between the two beats. The third type is the dichrotic pulse. In a dichrotic pulse, there are two beats per cardiac cycle, one during systole and the second in diastole. If the patient is being intra-arterially monitored, a dichrotic pulse will produce a characteristic, M-shaped waveform, shown in picture e. A dichrotic pulse is generally seen in younger patients with low cardiac output states and elevated systemic vascular resistance such as cardiomyopathy or heart failure, post-valve replacement surgery, sepsis, and hypovolemia. In a dichrotic pulse, there is an accentuated diastolic dichrotic wave after the dichrotic notch, due to aortic valve closure. Low stroke volume combined with intact arterial vascular resistance must be present for a dichrotic pulse to occur. In patients with a normal arterial pulse, a dichrotic wave, thought to be caused by rebounding of blood against the aortic valve, is measurable on waveform analysis but is too low in amplitude to be felt on palpation, and is hidden by the larger normal systolic wave. In disease states resulting in low stroke volume, the systolic wave is smaller, making it easier to palpate the dichrotic wave. When combined with an intact arterial system, which amplifies the rebound of the pulse during diastole, the dichrotic pulse may be felt. The fourth type is pulsus alternans. This is a regular pulse that has alternating strong and weak beats. This can be identified at the bedside, but can also be seen on arterial waveform at cardiac catheterization. It is associated with advanced left ventricular failure, and aortic valve disease. Several mechanisms have been proposed, two of which are associated with the most evidence. First one is the Frank-Starling theory. In left ventricular dysfunction, there is a decrease in cardiac output, that causes a raised end diastolic volume. This raised volume allows for greater myocardial stretch, and via the Frank-Starling mechanism, causes the next contraction to be more forceful. After the strong beat, the end diastolic volume is smaller, and hence the next beat is weaker. The second theory is the inherent beat-to-beat -beat variability. This theory is based on the concept that there is inherent beat-to-beat -beat variability in myocardial contractility. The myocardium can vary its enotropic state, and therefore, the force of contraction from one beat to the next. There are also many other suggested mechanisms, such as failure of the ventricle to completely relax after a strong beat, causing incomplete filling in diastole. Alternations of preload and afterload. Sympathetic system and baroreceptor influences. Alternations of cardiac action potentials. Variations in intracellular calcium, where in diastolic left ventricular dysfunction, ejection duration is prolonged due to slowed calcium reuptake. For its sign value. 
There are few well-conducted studies on the value of pulsus alternans as a sign. However, if present, studies have shown pulsus alternans to have a reasonable correlation with left ventricular dysfunction. The fifth type of pulse is pulsus bisferians. The normal pulse is characterized by two systolic peaks, separated by a mid-systolic dip. Often only the first systolic peak is felt when taking a pulse. The first systolic peak is the percussion wave caused by rapid left ventricular ejection, and the second peak is created by the wave hitting the peripheral vessels and being reflected back. In pulsus bisferians, both peaks are accentuated, resulting in two systolic peaks of the pulse, with a mid-systolic dip being palpable. This is associated with aortic regurgitation, aortic regurgitation with milder aortic stenosis, and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It can also be due to large patent ductus arteriosus and arteriovenous fistula, although it is rare. For its general mechanism, in aortic regurgitation with aortic stenosis, the venturi effect causes the abnormal pulse. Rapid blood flow through the aortic valve sucks in the walls of the aorta. This momentarily reduces the flow, and produces a notch between the systolic peaks of the arterial waveform. This is the same principle as the mechanism underlying the anacrotic pulse. However, in aortic stenosis, the venturi effect reduces a normal amplitude pulse. Whereas in the setting of aortic regurgitation, the initial pulse amplitude is higher, as there is a large stroke volume from vigorous systolic contraction. Due to this higher output state and the additional regurgitant volume being ejected from the ventricle, the first systolic peak of the pulse becomes more obvious. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there is a sharp rapid upstroke of the carotid pulse in systole, owing to a hyperdynamic contraction due to hypertrophy, followed by rapid decline due to left ventricular outflow obstruction. The venturi effect may also draw the anterior mitral valve leaflet towards the interventricular septum, exacerbating the outflow tract obstruction, and producing a more significant notch. The second pulse peak is thought to be related to the reflected wave. Lastly, there is the sixth type, which is pulsus parvus et tardis. This is a carotid pulse that is of small volume on palpation and delayed in its peak, where the peak is closer to the second heart sound. This is associated with aortic stenosis. For its mechanism, aortic stenosis causes a decrease in the rate of ejection of blood from the left ventricle, while at the same time the duration of ejection is prolonged. Consequently, amplitude is decreased, resulting in a smaller pulsation. The delayed nature of the pulse is thought to be caused by the combined effects of flow stenosis causing a decrease in rate of ejection of blood out of the left ventricle, compliance of the vessel distal to the stenosis, and venturi effect. The stenosed aortic valve reduces the speed at which blood is ejected out of the left ventricle into the aorta. When blood flows through a stenosis, there is a pressure drop and a decrease in the rate of ejection of blood into the aorta. This is exacerbated by the venturi effect, which sucks in the arterial wall, narrowing the arterial lumen, and further delaying the arterial pulse. Studies have shown that decreased compliance of the post-stenotic vessel damps the arterial waveform at high frequencies, decreasing downstream pulsatility, contributing to the production of a delayed pulse. That's all for this video. Thank you.